Hi, and welcome to the second episode of Cooking Through Cookbooks, a series that I am doing where I am cooking through my cookbooks. If you don't know what this concept is about, you can go ahead and go on my latest reels where I explain exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So this week we are cooking from But I Could Never Go Vegan by Tristy Turner. This is one of my digital cookbooks that I have on here. I have a hundred plus digital cookbooks. So this series is going to go for a long time. Um, the way that I chose this recipe was by randomly selecting an ingredient out of a bowl. These ingredients come from my pantry because I'm also cooking through my pantry. And the ingredient that I chose was quinoa. I didn't have a lot of quinoa, so I thought a little bit out of the box and said, okay, what can I do with quinoa that's not your basic? And I ended up finding this recipe and it called for quinoa flour. So I toasted up some quinoa and I made some quinoa flour. And the rest of the ingredients are all laid out here. We have farro, red lentils, barbecue sauce, soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, don't know how to say it, <laughs> some beets, um, nutritional yeast, and some spices. We also have some tempeh over here that we will be making tempeh bacon with. And the recipe that we are doing today is a barbecue bacon burger. The recipe calls for like, pickled red cabbage, the burger patties, and then to assemble the sandwiches is the tempeh bacon, which we're going to make. The pickled red cabbage, I didn't have red cabbage, so I opted out of making that. But everything else we have, the first thing that I'm going to do is make the tempeh because it needs to marinate for an hour. While it's marinating for an hour in the fridge, I'm going to get the rest of everything else ready. I have to cook the farro and I have to cook the lentils because the recipe calls for both of them to be cooked already. And um, that's about it. Let's get started on this recipe. So for starters, we are going to rinse the farro and rinse the lentils to put them to cook. I already have the water required for both the farro and the lentils to cook. Always rinse and dry, oops, always rinse and dry your grains and your lentils and legumes very well. This is to get all the starches out, get all the nasty stuff, especially if you've had your stuff sitting around for a while like I have. Um, I will be honest, I have only ever made <laughs> farro once and I really did not like the way it came out. Um, I know I purchased this bag of farro that I had here for another recipe that I was going to test out and I never did. So I really wanted to get rid of this bag of farro. I was able to use the entire bag. So it's not one of my favorite grains. I also don't really like any other grains besides rice. Rice is probably one of my favorite grains. Um, okay, so we have five and a half cups of water going. I'm going to add the farro. And then we're going to bring that to a boil. And once it's boiling, I will lower it and simmer it. First, we have to rinse out the lentils. Lentils especially can be really gross and dirty depending on where you buy them from. They might have been sitting on the shelf for a long time. Um, if you can see, like the water is coming out very murky, you want it to be clear, get all those nasty starches out, any bad stuff, any bacteria. Okay. The great part about this recipe also was that I had everything besides the cabbage and that's why I opted on not making the pickled red cabbage for this recipe just because I had everything and I really didn't want to have to buy one ingredient. Uh, but I do have some pickled red onions which we can use instead of the pickled red cabbage. It's not the same, but still tasty. Okay, so now we're going to also put this water on high and boil the lentils. And then once they start boiling, we can bring it to a simmer. Thankfully, they both have to cook for about the same amount of time. So they will be done around the same time. 
So while we have the lentils and the farro cooking, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up the tempeh and add it to the marinade. Again, like I said before, this needs to marinate for about an hour. So I anticipate while the farro has to cook and I have to put together the rest of the burger, uh, the tempeh should be ready to, uh, I lost my words, it should be ready to pan fry. This is the last part of the burger. I also love making tempeh burger. It's one of my favorite things to use tempeh for. The nuttiness from the tempeh really gives it this great flavor. And also if you marinate it properly and for a long period of time, that bacon taste really comes out. It's delicious. This marinade recipe from this cookbook is a little different from the one that I usually use, but we are following the recipe, so we're going to do it exactly how the recipe calls. Maybe my life will be changed. I already measured everything out and I created the marinade. All I have to do is whisk it up a little bit. There's balsamic vinegar, Worcestershire sauce, liquid smoke, soy sauce, garlic powder, olive oil, cumin, pepper, a little bit of salt, and I think that's about it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour that into this container. Get all that goodness out. Oh, and some liquid smoke also. Liquid smoke is what really brings out that bacony. Take We're going to chop our tempeh into thin strips. The more you have, the better, because then you can put loads of strips of bacon on your burger also i am definitely not going to be using all this tempeh on my burger so now i have some tempeh bacon that i can use for another recipe throughout the week which is fabulous okay I'm also going to set a timer for this just in case it rolls over after i cook everything else and then we can just wait a little bit. Patience, patience. Okay, now I'm just gonna shake it up a little bit, make sure everything is coated. Mmm, that looks so good. So the lentils have started to boil. I'm going to lower it and simmer for another 15 minutes. The farrow's quite not there yet, but we'll give it some time. The next thing I'm going to do is peel and chop the beets. I highly suggest being very careful. Don't wear a white shirt. Possibly wear an apron. This stuff stains and will get in your clothing for a very long time. Most likely will not come out. I've had that mistake happen plenty of times before. Anything that you use to cook the beets, like your knife, your cutting board, anything, wash it right away to get that color out because it will not come out, I promise you. So I'm gonna chop this. And I am going to compost the scraps. Beets is one of those vegetables that's truly underrated. I love beets so much. I love the smell, the taste. I really like making beet ketchup. Um, it reminds me of the beet ketchup from By Chloe, if you've ever had By Chloe. There is a recipe that I found online that is a replica of it. It doesn't taste exactly the same, but it's just as good. It's so delicious. I also like using beets to put in my brownies. I have a recipe up on my blog that you can check out and what else do i like beets in i love oh i love beet juice just beets with some apples and ginger and orange delicious the next step is to steam the beets but my steam basket will not fit in that small pot so i'm just going to boil them until they're tender the lentils are done. I separated them and it, and I'm letting it cool over there. The farro still needs a little bit of time. And we're also going to be preheating the oven because once all of our ingredients are ready, we're popping everything into this food processor 
and then we're forming our patties and popping them in the oven and then that's it. It's very simple, it's very easy, I'm very excited. I've never had beets in a burger before. Usually I don't make veggie burgers at home. If I'm making a burger, I'm craving a burger, it's usually like a Beyond Meat or Impossible Patty. I'm excited, I'm excited to try something that I wouldn't normally make at home. I'm going to put together the rest of the ingredients in the food processor, which is the beets, garlic, barbecue sauce, nutritional yeast, liquid aminos, which I'm using soy sauce instead, cumin, thyme, chili powder, paprika, and liquid smoke. Just to have this ready. So we have soy sauce, liquid smoke, Worcestershire sauce. I will never know how to say that. So I apologize if there's any time I'm, I'm using that ingredient, I will say it the way that I always do, which I don't know how to say it. We have spices, which is cumin, thyme, chili powder, and smoked paprika, traditional yeast, some quinoa flour. I've never had quinoa flour in anything that I know of before, and it was easy to make it. It was, you know, you just toast the quinoa the way you would if you were toasting peanuts to make peanut butter, and you blend it, and that's it. It's super easy. So if you ever need quinoa flour and you have some regular quinoa, there you go. And you don't have to buy it because I know quinoa flour is very expensive, which is so silly because regular quinoa is not that expensive. So we have some barbecue sauce here. We've got the water boiling. I'm going to pop in the beets before I do anything else. And they're just going to cook for about five minutes until they're tender going to add the garlic cloves into this. One of my biggest pet peeves of cooking is peeling garlic. I don't like peeling garlic. I don't like the sticky residue that it leaves. It calls for two garlic cloves, but two garlic cloves is never enough for me. I'm going with three. I was going to put more, but just in case, I won't do that don't want to overpower it either okay that's it now let's check the farro ah! okay. spoon in the sink yeah so now the farro more water is evaporating so now we're just gonna wait until the beets are done and the farro is done once both of those are done I'm going to let it cool for a bit and then add it to the food processor and then we are forming the patties and popping them in the oven. So, the beets and the red lentils. Also, I think I put a little bit too much water in the red lentils because the lentils came out a little mushy. But since it's all being combined in a food processor, I'm not too worried about how it's going to come out. Now I'm going to cover this and run this through the food processor. The dough seems to be a little wet. I'm assuming that's coming from the lentils that they may have had too much water. Um, it could be a numerous amount of things, maybe the farro. Um, I added some more quinoa flour to give it a little more oomph. And it seems like it will hold up. But just to be safe, I'm not going to use my hands like the directions say to, to form the patties. What I'm going to do is use a giant ice cream scooper. So these are ready. I also made a mess. Oops. So these are going to go into the oven for 20 to 30 minutes, flipping them halfway through. So I'm going to set a timer for 15 minutes and flip them. And I will see you back when these are ready to be assembled onto the bun. I took them out of the oven. They look good, they smell delicious. I'm going to let them cool for about five minutes. And while I'm letting them cool, I'm going to make the tempeh bacon and then it's time to serve them. Tempeh bacon to cook on either side for 
five to seven minutes. So while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and assemble my stuff, my topping for my burger. Alrighty. So we have this tomato here. I think I'm just going to cut it one giant round. That's enough for me. Let's put all the toppings on top so then I can just make like a little BYOB, build your own burger little bar. This for every family. Okay, and then we have the avocado. Then we slice that as well. These are crisping up nicely. The end result, as you can tell, it looks very beefy. All the moisture was sucked out, so I do have a nice beefy burger here. Whoa, this thing is massive. All right. Now we'll add, oh wait, hold on, no. Always put your cheese on top of your patty so that the cheese can melt a little bit from the warmth of your patty. And then I'll add my bacon. And the onions. This looks so good. My mouth is watering. I've been munching on stuff all day. And this is like finally my meal. Whoa, do you see that baby? Look how nice and thick that is. Oh man, this looks so good. The moment of truth. Let's see how these burgers taste. Okay, this is going to be very messy. Oh man, everything's falling apart already. Wow. It has the texture of a burger and the taste is delicious. I feel like you can feed this to a non-vegan and they would not know. My bacon fell out. The bacon is really good. Mm. This is really good. I'd make this recipe again. I would definitely include this like in my meal prep. All in all, 10 out of 10. 5 out of 5. I really like this burger. So I'm going to finish eating my burger now. Thank you so much for watching if you made it to the end. If you have any comments or questions about cooking through cookbooks and what I'm doing with this series, leave a comment down below and i hope you will be back next week to watch the next episode of cooking through cookbooks thank you